right behind me, the most visible thing on property is the control tower. Let me tell you something, when you plug in up there, it is the most amazing feeling you can ever have as an air traffic controller. Let me tell you how this tower works. Upstairs, there are two teams of four controllers and the tower is split in half. That side of the tower up there, those windows, belong to the team that's responsible for 1836 and then the team that's over here for 927 is on this tower, this side of the tower. We have a rookie, typically two veterans and a team lead and each portion of the windows is one guy. So the person here talking on the radio is getting input from about five people, including all three of your team members and maybe a supervisor that's standing behind the team ensuring the safety. Here. Now explain to here me up. how you teach your team to work three six, which are these windows over here, go. Okay, working three six, we tell everybody to go to the little runway as much as we can because we wanna let airplanes depart off the big runway. If we have to go to the big, we space them down on the dots. We use the purple dot and the yellow dot on 3-6. That's right. So interestingly enough, you know, when we talked about how each person has a, a sec quadrant of from Fisk, you're already starting to be looked at. And then when you get to the base, and then when that's where the base leg spotter, and then sometimes the person knocking the radio, and then you as a team lead or me as a team lead would say, we're going to the big runway or we go to the skinny runway and then we start selecting dots. What also makes 3-6 challenging is the warbird arrival. Yes very challenging. Warbird arrival is really kind of nutty. So sometimes you're crossing bases. Which Warbirds come and they break overhead to the right and everything is going on opposite base to the left. That's right. And they have to cross out there on the base. It's Every real, real fun. But that's 3-6. And what do you like about 2-7, Jeff? I love 2-7 because your downwind is right there where you can see it. You can pull your base in tight. You have this very tight control on your arrival. That's right. So we put the four, two spotters, one coming up the railroad tracks to the downwind. You have a guy on downwind, so you call it downwind spotter. So if you were to listen and go, high wind, start your downwind, that's the downwind spotter yelling to the communicator who's on frequency. He just simply repeats it because the communicator is responsible for the runway and picking the dots and figuring out there's also a base lake spotter. What I found difficult about 27 is um, the RNF final for 27 is really kind of, you know, that's driving straight in. The warbirds straight come up the lake. lake. Warbirds are on the left base. That's right. And then you Fisk got, is on the right downwind right base. It it's can get really fun out there a mile from the runway. It is as they turn absolutely final. complicated, but it's so, for the right individuals who are sick in the head like he and I, that was probably the most fun you'll ever have in air traffic. Now, I will tell you that we 99% of the time it's 2736 here, but on occasion it's 18, and that gets kind of nutty. But nine gets really, really Sucks. sporty. So, um, yeah, so if you're on <laughs> runway nine in Oshkosh, rest assured, none of the controllers wearing pink shirts are enjoying that at We're not happy about that. No. That happens way too fast. And why is that? Because everybody's come up the rail track from Fisk and then the RNF straight in. So everybody's converging at about a mile final. And, and you lose them, right? About a quarter mile final, you lose them behind the trees. That's right. And you don't know what's happening. And right behind us is Fisk. Now, interesting enough, it's IFR. Take a look. There is not a thing no, going it's, around. It's solid. 500 foot overcast. That's right. So nobody's flying today. There's usually a team parked right there at the table between us. You see them right behind yeah, with the it's glasses. Just the microphone. It's all IFR that the tower grabs all this airspace and because there's nobody flying in here, so there's no reason anybody to be here. But if you've flown into Fisk before, you'll realize that the um, in the tower, in a thing here now with ADSB, he's got an actual raw radar feed, so he sees exactly what the he's radar. That's your end number. He knows who you are. That's right. He knows everything, and also have a display that he puts in the trailer back here that has the ground radar, so he can see exactly what the ground is doing. The way this operates here is there's somebody uh, talking to Mike, and then there's a spotter, and what they do is they look up the line, which is right behind here. Let's spin around. We'll take a look. And basically, what you do is you'll hear them say, "Hey, uh, aircraft a half a mile south and, of this." And right there is a railroad track sign. At the bottom of the hill is a railroad track that. So Everybody follows. That's right. So now you're looking up the up the railroad tracks. So you can see from toward Ripon if you look at the chart and see these two phone lines up here. Those two right there. That is what we use for a spot to determine when you're half miles out of the fist. Right. So as the airplane comes up and they go between those two wires. I, you, I always teach the rookies to make sure that's about half a mile south of Fisk, rock your wings. It's a great location. And then what they'll do is they'll either spit you out to one direction or back up the, uh, continue up the railroad track for 27 or over to 3618. And also if you come out here and you're visiting Fisk, you can pop a lawn chair right over here and, and you can sit there and watch. It's probably one of the best kept secrets of Bring yourself Oshka. some spotted cow and a lawn chair mm -hmm. and it's a great afternoon. Yep. And right there is runway 27. Right there. Now right behind us, look there, right over Joel's bald head, is a call the Moo Cow. And the pink shirt control is up there. They're working departures. So all the departures you see right there, you'll see them. The two guys up there, one is in communication with the tower, 
the other is actually talking to the pilots. But this is how it works. These guys clear for takeoff. Right off there, you'll see a couple in position. Now, if there's somebody coming into land, they are watching for the final. So if somebody's landing, they'll stop the little chain and put one for the guy will land and they'll start departing again. It's super intense. This is probably one of the best positions to work at Oshkosh, I can tell you right now, because the downwind, the final, and the warbirds all come from the approach end. And meanwhile, you're just talking to parts. It's a spotter up there, and then the guy communicating. They work as a team. The spacing right here, the separation is only 1,500 feet, which is not normal. We're under a waiver that allows us to shorten up the spacing. There's a couple guys hold short lines with wands. So when they would say controllers don't use wands, well, guess what? We have to learn to use the wand. And that's one of the things we always joke about when we were always controlling over here. Now we're here over at 3618. Hey, you, if you look, way, out if you look way over there, you'll see another moo cow. That's called flyby. Same kind of concept we talked about over there on the other side for 27. You have somebody up on the moo cow who's in constant communication with the tower. That's probably the coolest the tower ever. Busiest around. control tower. That's right this week. week. You have a, somebody talking. And then you have somebody on the, on the trailer, her name is Kathy tonight. She is amazing, love Kathy. We'll talk about the arrival, but this is the runway right here we went around. Moo Cow right there was the one that uh, put somebody in front of us. It happens, that's the safety features of Oshkosh is we're always backstopping. So if you misjudge something, there's a boatload of people there to help you out.